So I had said that um, I would scribble together some thoughts I have on the um, emotional and stress cycle that traders go through. I'll also go over um, uh, what I do to deal with these things as uh, uh, with time it, it's not like these things go away. Uh, it is just a part of being in this business uh, but we get better at dealing with it and uh, um, so we'll just try to cover that. So another thing is this would be applicable to both um, systematic as well as discretionary traders. It's a bit of a myth uh, when people think that systematic and fully rule based traders don't go through emotional cycles. Um, although it could be true that it's amplified more in discretionary trading because you're always making decisions on the fly. Uh, but would be applicable to both. So what am I talking about? Um, firstly, uh, across across time frames, right? So uh, as as a day trader, uh, be it a daily time frame or a much longer time frame, you go through cycles. And and what do these uh, cycles look like? So if you say this is uh, nine fifteen to three thirty, um, in a day we we have lots of emotional up and downs. So we we have. Um, this is joy, let's say, and this is um, frustration. So we, we experience a lot of these micro bouts of joy and frustration. It's constant up and down. And both of them to experience, they, they cost uh, emotional currency, right? So it, it takes energy to feel happy. It takes energy to feel frustrated. Probably it takes less energy to feel happy and more energy to feel frustrated. But in a day, we go through these ups and downs and it's, it's a steady thing. And over time, right, over time, as uh, you get more and more accustomed to doing this, you learn to numb this out. This starts to become numb. You're, you're, it doesn't go away. It's just that your way of dealing with it, you know, since you're used to it, is better. You, you have a higher tolerance of, of expending this emotional currency, but it doesn't go away. So what this leads to is if you were to look over a long time frame, since you're constantly burning emotional energy and that's adding to stress, if you, if you were to look at uh, this as stress and this as time, now you say this is a yearly time frame, so across months, you will see that your stress will go up and here you need to take active measures to bring it down, right? So you, you have to bring it down and then again it will, it's natural behavior is to go up, right? Be because of what we spoke about earlier. And, and you have to take actions here to bring this down right and if you because if you don't and if you let this break out if your stress levels break out this is called the stupid zone this is called the stupid zone and this is also called the burnout zone where you will either take stupid actions you will do things that otherwise your perfectly rational self would not do and uh, it might also lead to burnout where, where you completely are dejected with um, uh, you know what you're doing and this can start affecting your personal life and, and have all those kinds of repercussions which is absolutely not sustainable if you want to do this as a career if you want to do this <laughs> across years and decades then they can then you can never afford to uh, go ahead. So I'll go into what I do to deal with this. One more thing uh, to address is um, many people think that uh, let's say somebody is used to an equity curve which is like this, right? So uh, it's going up in a steady fashion and maybe they're used to making quarter on quarter uh, profits and month on month profits and a lot of people think that um, you know when that starts to plateau with a time drawdown or it starts to come down with an actual drawdown this uh, leads to more stress and frustration. This is both true and not so true. Uh, it is uh, possible to be at the peak equity and still be under a lot of stress and frustration. It's completely possible. But these two conditions, they make it more relevant. So what, what, what happens when you're used to, let us say somebody is used to, you know, running um, uh, a few kinds of trades, mix of systematic discretionary, and they're used to uh, making between three to 5% in a month. And let's just assume, now, if this suddenly dips, they are more likely to feel like they are underperforming and hence be more frustrated. So this argument holds true and this probably is a catalyst in the in the stress cycle, but it is not always true. You can be doing, you can be at the peak and still be extremely frustrated. Now, what do you do? Now, we'll, we'll get to the solution of um, uh, how you uh, uh, deal with this or how I deal with it rather. Now, I'm going to uh, put my metrics here. You can you can put your own, right? So my annual drawdown that I go for, um, I, I don't want more than 3%. Uh, 
right? But worst case, I would even think that if this goes to 5%, I mean, in the back of my, I will say 3%, but in the back of my mind, I know that, okay, up to 5%, I'm fine. Now, um, one way is that, let us say, um, I am peaking out in stress and I am reaching, let us say, between 25 to 3% drawdown during a year. What I'll do here is the absolute best thing to do is turtle. So when, when your stress cycle, you know, is peaking out and you know that it cannot go into this, uh, you know, burnout zone. First thing you do, you go into turtle mode. Now, what does turtle mode mean? Quite simply, you cut size. So if you're trading a size of X, bring it down by uh, 30%, uh, 50%, whatever you can do. So that so right now here, your priority is to build back confidence, to reduce stress. So what do you do? First thing, immediate thing that you do is you cut size. Now, what happens is uh, when, when you cut size here, you will automatically, uh, if you're having a falling equity curve, if it continues to fall, you will smoothen it. If it recovers from here, it will probably take longer to reach equity high, but this will give you a massive boost of confidence because you know that with a reduced position size, you were able to come back. Now, one of the biggest reasons any trader feels stress is because of this question. What if I don't know what I'm doing? Am I just getting lucky? Am I am I not really smart or I'm not really capable or I'm not the genius that I thought I was and instead I'm just getting lucky? Now, how do you address this? The best way to address is uh, one, if you have good historical performance, go back and look at it. That that will give you a big boost saying that, look, I must not be an idiot because I've made money. And the second thing is when when you reduce your risk, when you cut your position size as you're losing, and from there, you're able to make a complete recovery all the way back to peak equity. You will feel that. And, and yes, it probably will take longer at a reduced position size, but it will immensely boost your confidence. And if your equity curve continues to dip, then at least it will happen at a slower pace. And as it, it dips into zones which you consider unacceptable, you can absolutely eliminate size and eliminate risk, wait for the highest probability trades. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have a checklist of one, two, three, four, five. And you generally trade if you get three out of five now for any setup. Let's say you get three out of five. Instead, wait for only five on five trades. Right here, when you're stressed, when your equity curve is dipping, what you want to focus on is building confidence. You need to build back confidence in yourself, in your trading. And that is more important than uh, trying to quickly reach uh, back equity curve. See, uh, don't be in a rush is finally what it all comes down to and uh, provided you take the right things because let's let's assume you do the opposite let's um, okay let's assume you have a flat or a falling equity curve and because of this time lost or because of this money lost you decide i'm going to increase my risk here which means i'm going to take higher um, position size i'm going to take uh, higher uh, uh, you know risk to quickly make it back up and let's say this backfires, then the confidence stumble that will happen here and the relative uh, peak in your frustration, this thing, this will completely destabilize you and you will break. And this is the biggest mistake that people make. By breaking here, you will lose confidence in yourself. And the only thing, if any, uh, that a trader has to protect um, <laughs> across their career is their confidence and psychology. The moment a trader feels like I am gambling, you will not be able to make money anymore because you have lost even when you get the right setups you will not be able to trade them because you are starting to doubt yourself as a person your own capabilities and your abilities uh, and if this is a real business or not and if you get into that uh, you're going to be a loser so protecting psychology is number one uh, what i feel is that you know when, when you're at peak equity curve and at the least level of stress that's where you should push uh, you should push for higher size higher risk all of that and when you're dipping, immediately go into this turtle mode where you cut size, uh, you take breaks, you wait for a highest probability setups because here it's not about the money or the equity curve anymore. It's about winning and rebuilding confidence. So those are just some of my random thoughts. If it was of use to you, um, I'm glad.